Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out the new ASUS ZenBook UX305 today. This is a brand new Ultrabook from ASUS. It is running with the new uh, Core M processor, which is a fifth generation Intel Broadwell chip. And what that means is uh, low power, decent performance. I'm actually pretty impressed with what it can do. Uh, and it is fanless, so it's a completely silent computer, even under a load. And I know people get concerned about uh, fanless PCs, but what it'll do is kind of step down the processor performance the, uh, the harder it gets pushed. But I haven't really found any real uh, performance degradation during my testing, and you'll see some examples of that in a minute. Uh, so like I said, this has the Core M processor. Uh, it runs with the Intel HD graphics. You've got a 13-inch display. Uh, this is the uh, 1080p version, so it's 1920 by 1080, so full HD. Uh, and it is matte display also, so you don't get a lot of reflectivity off the screen. So if you don't like those shiny screens, uh, this one might be something you might like to see because it is really uh, quite nice to look at and doesn't reflect light too much. It, uh, it's got a pretty decent viewing angle on it. I'm, I believe it is an IPS display, or yes, IPS display. Uh, they also have a Quad HD version coming out soon that'll be 3200 by 1800, which isn't uh, yet available. But display looks really nice. Uh, pretty pleased with that. Uh, it has eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD, and it is really fast. So the, the solid state drive on here is uh, really well performing, and you're gonna see some uh, tests with that in a few minutes as well. Let's take a look at some of the ports on here. So we've got uh, two USB 3.0 ports on this side. They also have a, uh, a port on the other side that gives you a little bit extra power out of those USB ports so you can charge a tablet or something like that. Uh, it also has an SD card slot here on the side, but the SD cards kind of stick out quite a bit. So that's about as far in as it goes. So you'll uh, definitely have the card sticking out of there a little bit when you're using it. Uh, the keyboard isn't bad. It's got pretty much a full size keyboard. They do call it chiclet size, but I've been able to type on it quite well. and been pleased with how well it's been typing. Uh, the trackpad is about where I've seen other Windows trackpads. It doesn't, the thing that really gets me with these Windows trackpads is that when you're doing the two finger scrolling thing, it's not very accurate. So that's been the one thing that's been bugging me. Uh, similar issues have uh, arisen on other Windows PCs as well, but uh, that's my only complaint with the trackpad. Otherwise, it isn't too bad. Uh, it is a clickable uh, trackpad, so you can uh, get that uh, you know, real response to it when you push down uh, the trackpad there. On the other side, you have an additional USB 3 port. You have a uh, HDMI out as well, one of those micro HDMI connectors for plugging it into an external display. You can drive two displays with it, and you also have a headset uh, microphone port here too. So you've got a nice number of ports, especially when uh, you stack this up perhaps against the new MacBook that's coming out, which has one port and one port only, uh, pretty much running with the same processor. So uh, a lot, lot more ports available, and if that's not enough, I feel like I'm pitching this thing, but I really kind of like it. Uh, if that's not enough, they give you a, a USB to uh, Ethernet adapter or two that comes in the box as part of the deal. So the price on this, uh, with all this stuff on it, uh, is $699, so half the price of the entry-level MacBook, uh, which I think is a pretty good deal. Uh, that's, of course, with the, with the regular HD display, not the uh, high DPI quad HD display that you might have on the uh, MacBook coming up. But I think, quite honestly, again, at this screen resolution, uh, the 1080p display looks really, really nice. So let's step into a couple of little benchmarks that we usually run to see how it performs. We're going to look at uh, some gaming, some office tasks, as well as some other uh, performance things. And we're going to first step into uh, its web performance. Performance. So we're going to pop open uh, Chrome, and I know there's are, there are probably better running browsers on here than Chrome, but this is what I run across the board on all of my uh, computers. So we'll just pop open a website here. Maybe we'll start with the New York Times, and you can see how uh, quickly things come up there. So it does boot up the pages quite nicely. Uh, page rendering seems to be working uh, quite well, too. So it really is, it feels a lot like my MacBook from a couple of years ago, which is running with an i5 processor. So really nice. Uh, web browsing experience. And if we take a look at its Octane test, which is a uh, means of assessing how uh, it performs with uh, page rendering as well as JavaScript, uh, you can see it performs at 18,244 on that test, which puts it above the i5 MacBook from a couple of years ago, uh, but it consumes a lot less power. So, uh, and it's fanless too, and the MacBook is neither of those things. So it's pretty neat to see uh, what you're able to get out of here. Uh, by comparison, if we look at another Broadwell chip from uh, Dell on their XP S13, that's, that machine scores higher, but of course it is a more powerful processor, uh, which also consumes more power, and that one comes in around 22,495. Uh, but if you look at the bottom there with that HP Chromebox, that's about uh, the score you'll get on the best performing Chromebook right now. So you, see, you can see it really uh, is a kind of a middle of the road uh, performer when it comes to doing things, but it's also you know 2.6 pounds and uh, running with a fanless design that is very 
very much portable given how slim everything is too. So I, I think it's a really, you know, at least as far as web browsing is concerned, uh, it fits in pretty nicely into that area. Let's take a look at some office tasks now. And I've got this newsletter template that I usually run uh, when we're testing these sorts of things. And this is a pretty involved template, but I can go in here and just uh, maybe change um, this text here to my name. And as you can see, as I'm typing, it will uh, respond immediately to things. So it seems to be able to keep up quite well with typing. As I scroll through here, it does lag a little bit when it's rendering some of these pages but it isn't too bad, uh, so I'm not really going to fault it for that at all. It seems to be able to keep up with uh, anything that I might do with an image in the document, moving things around. So I think it's a, a pretty good performer for word processing and doing some of those kinds of tasks as well. But uh, what a lot of people probably want to see is gaming. And upfront, this is really not designed to be a gaming PC, but it can run games. Uh, it does have that Intel uh, built-in graphics, so it's you know everything's on pretty much one chip on these new devices. So it's not the fastest GPU in the world. Uh, but it can perform. So let's take a look first at Minecraft. All right, well, here we are running Minecraft, and I have my uh, display up here so you can see what kind of frame rate we're getting. We're getting anywhere from like 25 to 50 frames per second, depending on what we're doing, uh, which is pretty good. I am running with the Optifine plugin, which gives you a little bit of a performance boost, especially on uh, these built-in Intel graphics. But I am pretty impressed with its capabilities here, especially given that this is a fanless PC. Uh, the last round of fanless PCs we've looked at were running much slower Atom processors, but this one uh, is really doing quite well. And again, uh, pretty impressive of uh, frame rate considering uh, the fact that there is no fan cooling this chip off as we go. I, I suspect that the longer we run this and the more we tax it, uh, we'll see the performance decline as the system uh, adjusts to prevent any kind of thermal issues. But as you can see here, this is a pretty good Minecraft experience. All right, we're going to check out another game. This is Counter-Strike Go, and it is running on the Source Engine from Valve. So it's a, uh, it's a modern game, but it's not as modern as some of the newer titles that might be out there. But as you can see, if you look in the left-hand corner here, uh, we're getting frame rates uh, anywhere from like 30 to 60 frames per second. So really nicely performing. I did turn the graphics down to 720p on here to get this kind of smooth frame rate. But I'm actually seeing some clipping on the screen, which means that in many cases, it's generating the frames faster than uh, the display can put them up. So I think if you adjust some settings, maybe put some more detail on it or move it up to 1080p, uh, you might still get a good uh, performing game that also looks pretty good. So this is pretty impressive. I did try some other games, um, some things that really push the graphics hardware and also the processor. Those did not run as nicely as uh, this does. So I think, you know, if you target yourself appropriately, maybe to games that are a couple of years old uh, or newer games with the settings turned way down, and I think you'll have a pretty good gaming experience on it. In fact, I'm, I'm impressed that it's running as well as it is, again, given the fact that we're running with pretty much a fanless architecture and getting these kind of frame rates out of here. Let's take a look now at its internal SSD. It has a 256 gigabyte SSD, but they've oddly put it into two different partitions for some reason, but uh, you do get all that space. It's just broken up a little bit, uh, but it is remarkably fast. If we run our usual Blackmagic disk speed test here, you can see we're getting about 435, 440 megabytes per second on the right side, and the reads are, are pretty darn good too. So it's a really nicely performing SSD on here, and I think uh, it'll uh, certainly load up things like Microsoft Word very quickly as you can see, you just kind of tap on things and they pop open. So that is the Asus ZenBook UX305. This is a really nice machine. I'm quite impressed with this. Uh, you get a lot for the price, the eight gigs of RAM, the 256 gigabyte SSD that performs very well. Um, and it's a really nice alternative to a MacBook Air 13 if that's what you're in the market for. So this is a great Windows alternative to that. Uh, like the MacBook, it is aluminum in and out, uh, really nice design, pretty lightweight at 2.6 pounds. My only gripe are these little uh, things that stick up at the back back here. Uh, when you put the notebook down, it uses those little uh, little pegs to kind of prop up the keyboard. And if you're using like a cheap IKEA desk like I am, these things tend to uh, leave a little groove in the woods. So you may want to be careful about what you put it down on, but that's really uh, my only gripe with its overall design. The battery life is pretty good. Like I said, I think you'll get about six to eight hours or so of of standard kind of usage. They say 10 hours, but I think if you're only doing word processing and very light web browsing, you'll see that. Uh, if you're running Chrome like I do and doing some video watching and some other things, especially gaming, you'll see less battery life. But you know, if you're a student or something and using it for notes, you'll certainly get through a good portion of the day, if not all the day, uh, with the built-in battery on here. So again, this is a really nice computer, a really good alternative to a MacBook, uh, very competitively priced at $699, which is the, uh, the retail price. They might be in a little bit of a short supply while you're watching this so it, it, you're probably seeing some third-party sellers uh, selling it for more but definitely hold out for that $6.99 price because I think it's a, a very good value at that price point so I recommend it I thank the folks at ASUS for letting us borrow this for a couple of days and we'll be back with more technology soon this is Lon Sybin thanks for watching